This is a true story about a little girl called Kathleen who came with her sister Pat to live with my mum and dad in 1939. Kathleen was eight and Pat was six and it must have been quite scary to leave their family behind and not know what must, was going to happen. They came from Dover all the way to Ebba Vale, quite a long way. I wasn't born until after the war ended so all I know is what my mum told me and now I wish I had listened to her more because we don't always listen to our mums do we? I wrote to Kathleen who has lived in Canada for many years now to ask her what she can remember about what happened. There were about 1.3 million children evacuated by the first week of the war and I, my brother Fred and sister Pat were among them. The story at the very beginning for all of us was the same. My mother received a letter telling her that, the, that her three children of school age were being evacuated to a safer place for the duration of the war. Dover would become a target for the enemy due to the fine harbour and wartime ships it would contain. The day arrived when we would be evacuated. We all had our clothing and required items, plus we had our full names on a tag pinned to our jackets. We proceeded onto the train. Dad waved. It would be a, quite a while before I saw him again. I cannot remember how long the journey was. It was a very, very long. We did not know where we were, we were going until we got there. At the end of the journey, we got off the train in Ebbervale. The majority of the children from Dover had never been outside the town of Dover. We were placed in a very big room and there were a lot of adults present. These adults began walking around looking at us and our name tags. Then they then selected the child or children they wished to take care of. My brother Fred went early and waved goodbye. Pat and I were chosen by a lady and gentleman who will forever be in my thoughts and prayers, Mr and Mrs Henry. I want to say it now, nowhere in the whole world would I be able to find a better, lovable, kinder couple than Auntie Iris and Uncle Trevor. My heart aches even today when I read about the many of evacuees who did not go to a kindly and lovable home. Naturally, it took a little time for both Auntie and Uncle and us to get to know each other. But when we did, it was like heaven. Not only did they take us into the family, but so did the rest of the family. We had new aunts, uncles, cousins and grandparents. It was, as they say, magic. It is so difficult to remember everything, but these are some of my memories. I remember going to cricket with Uncle Trevor on the weekend, where I learned what a silly mid on was. Plus, we had a picnic after. I can identify what that one of my earliest memories is eating egg sandwiches at the cricket ground. My dad was a great cricketer. I remember Auntie Iris playing the organ in church, which was lovely. He received pocket money, which we never had at home. I also remember Auntie Iris making dresses for us. All of these things and the time in the home of Auntie Iris and Uncle Trevor were instrumental in making me positive, caring person I believe I am today. It was with them for, both, for almost four years and I sit and reminisce. They were four best years of my life. So that is what Kathleen said to me in her letter, but the story doesn't quite end there. Kathleen kept in touch with my parents after the war, and I have a vague memory of a young lady visiting us. I must have been about three or four years old then. Not long after that, Kathleen got married to Frank, who was a merchant seaman. After she was married, she emigrated to Canada, and unfortunately, after a few years, my parents lost touch with Kathleen, but they never forgot her and often wondered how she was. Anyway, as it happened, my mother's brother was living in Dover during the time of the commemoration of 40 years of the end of the war, and he put a notice in the local paper asking if anyone knew of Kathleen's whereabouts, explaining that his sister had looked after her during the war. He was inundated with phone calls from various relatives in Dover. I think Kathleen was one of about 11 children. In fact, her mum had had twins after the war and named them Trevor and Iris. So as a result, Kathleen wrote to my parents and they began corresponding again and sent them photographs like the one with her grandchildren. Then one day in the late 1980s, my mum and dad had had a lovely surprise. There was a knock at the door and who should be standing on the doorstep but Kathleen and her husband Frank. They had come over from Canada for a holiday and just turned up unexpectedly so we actually got to meet them too, which was really special. They visited Ebbo Vale a few times after that and stayed with my mum and dad. 
Unfortunately, my parents aren't with us anymore, but Kathy and I have kept in touch. One time when I was talking to her, we had Google Earth on the computer and could see her house and her car on the drive, which was fantastic. I will always treasure this special piece of family history and be proud of my parents' gesture and help in the Second World War. Also, our bond with Kathleen and her family is everlasting.